Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining today's Dream Wakers Daily Conversation. Today we're speaking with Brian Ford, who is a client solutions manager at Facebook. Prior to Facebook, Brian held roles at ESPN and several media and advertising companies where he managed accounts like Verizon, Home Depot, and Tostitos. Brian grew up in the Bronx and played basketball at Trinity College, where he majored in American Studies. Brian, it's so exciting to have you with us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well. And to start things off, we'd just love to hear a little bit about you and your career and life journey so far in your own words. Yeah. Um, so as you mentioned, um, I'm currently at Facebook. I'm coming up on two years at the company. Um, started in April of 2018. Um, after spending six years at ESPN. Um, but back to the early days, as you mentioned, grew up born and raised in the Bronx, um, went to elementary, middle, and high school in the Bronx as well, um, graduated 20, 2007 um, and headed on to Trinity College in Hartford, played basketball there for four years, um, had probably, it was the best four years of my life, I'd say, in terms of my adolescence. Um, you know, those are some pretty pivotal years as, as we've all come to learn as, you know, we get into our adulthood. Um, and then right away, uh, I was fortunate enough to start ESPN, um, in the business operations department. Uh, and I maneuvered my way around that department for about six, six and a half years. Um, and then it was, it was time for me to make a change. Um, and I was fortunate enough to land this role here at Facebook. Um, and as I mentioned, I've been here for about two years now. So uh, it's been an interesting ride, definitely lots of ups and downs, but, um, but I'm happy where I'm at right now. Awesome. That's great. Um, and I would love to know just how you got your start at ESPN, like that transition from college to ESPN and then maybe yeah. ESPN to Facebook. What was that like for you? Yeah. Um, I mean, that work was years in the making. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say as you know, as you start to get older and navigate through high school and college and you start to realize that these relationships that you make are super important to your future. Um, obviously the same ways in which friendships and your relationships with your family have lasting impacts on your life. The same goes for people who are mentors in your life as well. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have a mentor from ESPN while I was at Trinity. Um, so I was still a student, uh, it was my junior year um, so I was fortunate to get a head start on like having an idea of what it was that I wanted, asking the right questions, mm -hmm. reaching out to a lot of people just to figure out what it was that I potentially wanted to do. Because I mean, at the time, I think all I knew was I wanted to work at ESPN, right? Because it's like, I grew up on it. You're watching sports center every morning before school. You're watching highlights when you go to sleep. Um, you wake up and maybe if like, I was, I'm a big Laker fan. So growing up, those 10.30 p.m. games on the East Coast, I wasn't I wasn't watching them uh, in their totality. So I'd wake up the next morning, like, excited to find out what happened. Mm -hmm. And that was just a culture that I wanted to be a part of. Um, and then it was about figuring out what role I can hold within the company. So I think I used that opportunity my junior and senior year to ask the right questions. And I was fortunate enough to, you know, you, when you ask questions, you're introduced to people in different departments who may have just had a role open up or know someone who had a role open up. So. A lot of it is the hard work matched with timing. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have some good conversations heading into the conclusion of my senior year at Trinity. Um, and like I said, timing worked out. There was a role that opened up. It was a role that was in New York, so I didn't have to stay in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And it gave me the opportunity to start July um, of 2011. So six weeks after I graduated from Trinity. I think that's a great takeaway of like, you never know what connections will bring you and so oh, yeah. getting to know everyone, talking to everyone, being very open and, and willing to, to have those conversations is great yeah, advice. Absolutely. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit about how life has changed for you over the past few weeks. I know obviously we're living with a pandemic and it's very serious and people have transitioned to being home a lot more. So what is this transition to, to working from home looked like for you? Um, I mean, it's been tough, right? Like I, I don't think, obviously this was, this wasn't anything that any of us really expected. Um, obviously you watch the news and there's just so many different headlines that are getting thrown at you that you don't really know how you're going to react emotionally, right? Like this has never happened to us, yeah. you know, like you've heard in terms of you read history books or you read articles online of the black plague and the Spanish flu and things of that nature. And it just seems so far off in the distance that for us, it's just like a history lesson. 
Um, and then you realize that like we are literally living through history. We're living through a movie. And you don't know how that's going to affect you. So on top of the fact that, you know, now I'm working from home every day while well, sometimes it's nice, right, to be able to just wake up, roll out of bed, get on my computer, not have to worry about what am I wearing to work? I got to go shower, all this stuff. Like I can get to emails right away. That's cool. But um, this whole shelter in place and like just being stuck, it's tough. Like, and there are certain days where it's harder than others. Like I'm, I'm guilty of it. I've had days where I've just felt super, you know, nonchalant and lethargic and relaxed because these are tough headlines to read, right? Like hundreds of people dying in our in New York city every day. And it's just tough. Um, but from a working perspective, like it has its, its pros and cons. Like I never leave the office now. Right. So in some instances, that's great from a productivity standpoint on things that I really do want to work on. Um, from another standpoint, everyone has access to you because they know where you are all the time now. So outside of the fact that your calendar may be booked because you have a meeting, like everyone knows, like I know where I can reach them. I know that if I need this answered right now, I can. And sometimes it's difficult to manage everyone else's expectations because, you know, like at work, if I'm not at my desk and someone try, comes and tries to come and ask me a question, they'll know like, all right, Brian's not here. Maybe I'll ping him. I'll shoot him an email. I'll find him later. But now, People know where you are. So it's just that constant checking in that you just kind of have to be mindful of and give yourself the time to have some new time. Yeah, absolutely. That balance is so hard knowing that everyone's at home, but still you need to oh, separate yeah. work from life a little bit in order to keep your work. sanity. So that's a very important tip. Um, this actually is a great lead in to our first community question, which was from a 10th grader in New Jersey who wants to know how you handle balancing all of your responsibilities at work. <laughs> Um, I've been really big on to-do lists. Um, that keeps me sane. It keeps me organized. It keeps me structured. Um, I start every day when I get to the office with a to-do list. I'll look at emails that I've gotten overnight. I'll look at meetings that I have ahead of the day. Um, and I just will write just a full list of everything I have to do. And I'll, I'll have a checkbox next to it. Um, and I think a lot of it's just me holding myself accountable. Like I hate getting halfway through the day and realizing that half of my checkboxes haven't been done. Um, so I think that that applies some structure that allows me to know like, okay, I've committed to this, right? Cause once you put it on paper, I treat it like it's a, like almost like a contract. You've taken the time to write this out. These are your words. These are, this is exactly what you are setting, setting yourself out to do. And just making sure that you have that structure because it's very easy to try and hold everything in your head and say like, all right, I know I have to do this, 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 and this. And then you get distracted with something. This allows me to know that at 10 a.m., this was a focus of mine that I wanted to get done. Maybe four other things happen between 10 and 3 that distract me from it. But I can always look back and say, like, oh, yeah, I know I had to do this. So it serves as a to-do list, a set of reminders. I mean, again, like I mentioned, that structure to how you want to plan out your day. Oh, yeah. And there's nothing more amazing than getting to the end of the day with a completed checklist. Like, what a beautiful feeling. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the best. It's the best. <laughs> awesome. Well, a student in Tennessee wanted to ask you how you handle negative feedback about your work without feeling bad. Um, I got to admit, this is something that you kind of learn over time. Um, I think we're all wired to expect, I don't want to say perfection, but greatness out of ourselves. So a lot of times when you put your mind to something and you deliver something as a piece of work you're expecting because in your mind you hold yourself to a high standard that it's going to be great work that someone else is going to see it the same way i took a lot of that feedback personally when i was in my early 20s because this is the world like this is what happens when you're a young adult you get dropped in the world and then you realize how real the world is and it's just like you sink or swim my whole ideology of feedback has changed since i've gotten to facebook one of the things we pride ourselves on is saying that feedback is a gift. Um, and for me, I've really taken that personally because it allows you to realize that like, if you present something to me and I provide some feedback to you, that's me wanting you to improve. That's me wanting you to grow. That's me wanting you to reach your full potential. And I think for so long, we're so conditioned to taking things personally when people don't align with what it is that you're saying that it's hard to like understand like someone is speaking to you wanting to help you improve. 
So for me, it's really just been about taking a deep breath, reading things at face value and saying like, okay, this person is trying to help me improve. Let me see things from their standpoint, from their point of view. Let's see what those changes that they've suggested would do to my final product. And let's see what happens. Um, because again, like that whole collaboration piece that we pride on Facebook as well, um, it's super important. And you know, like you realize that there are very few people that are able to navigate through their careers alone whether or not, you know, they, they want to admit it or not, like everyone needs help. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs that mentor. Everyone needs that additional push from a colleague or a friend to help you reach your full potential. So I think for me, it's you, unless it's someone that's like being disrespectful in terms of their feedback, um, you kind of just got to take it in stride and realize like, this is an opportunity for me to improve. And this may be a blind spot that I had that I wasn't even cognizant of but you are helping me improve. You're helping me be a better me. So I think that's that's probably the best way that I've found myself going about it as of late. I've never heard it phrased like that, like feedback is a gift. I kind of, I love that perspective of like, we're all just trying oh, to yeah. help you be your best self, like you want to be, yep. so that's, that's really that's helpful, totally. I like that. Um, and a sixth grader submitted a question that says, are you still learning even though you're not in school anymore? Absolutely. Um, it's it's different because it's not as structured as like you have English class and then you have history class and then you have math and then you have science. Um, once you become an adult, you can kind of cater your own curriculum outside of work. Like you can follow podcasts that you listen to. There are blogs that you can follow. There are periodicals that you can check in on. Um, I think social media has been a really great way for us to access people in ways that we've never been able to. So when you have those mentors in your head that maybe people that you don't necessarily know, um, like a great person that I can use is LeBron. Um, I think LeBron has opened the door to his life through his social media and through his media channels, like the uninterrupted that give you a peek into what it's like to be him. And more importantly, like what it's like to be a man, what it's like to be a father, what it's like to be a family man. Um, and I think you learn from other people's actions just as much as you can from a textbook. You learn as much from the ways in which people carry themselves as much as you can from a teacher giving you a lecture. So I think it's really just about seeking that information that you deem valuable. Obviously, like there are going to be things that you're going to be that's required learning, whether it be from work and us taking online courses that we offer at Facebook. And there are plenty of sites out there that offer free material for you to learn um, online. Um, one site that comes to mind is Coursera that offers you the opportunity to take college courses for free and subjects that, you know, interest you. So I think absolutely you're learning in just ways that you, that just isn't the traditional sense of going to class, sitting in class, listening to a lecture, reading a textbook, going home, doing a homework assignment, maybe coming in, taking a test. It's really just about that constant flow of information. Um, and it's on you to, to seek it, right? And like I mentioned, you can cater it to people that you think you are more receptive to, people who you are like-minded to, people who you may have something in common with. Um, so yeah, absolutely learning every single day is pivotal because without it, you just, you're just the same person as you were yesterday. And that means that there's someone else that may have been one step behind you yesterday that is now caught up to you. And if you don't learn today, that person who's now caught up to you and continues to learn is going to surpass you. So you have to, you know, it's pivotal in terms of your success, not only for yourself, but your family, people you influence. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely learning every day and, and want to encourage everyone to continue to do so as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope that sixth grader knows that they can pursue new and exciting things. They could try something new, learn something they might thought absolutely. they might not like, but maybe they will figure out that they do like. Absolutely. Um, so our next question comes from an 11th grader in Ohio who is wondering what your number one piece of advice is for a high school student who has no idea what they want to do with their life. I think this kind of plays to your last point. Try everything. Um, be your biggest advocate. Be your biggest supporter. But also be your biggest critic. Um, be honest with yourself about what you like, what you're curious about what you want to learn about, what you dislike, what you know you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. 
um, and ask questions. I think that's one thing that I wish I had done a little bit more in high school was, and it's difficult, right? Like hindsight's twenty twenty. It's easy for me to go back and say like, oh, I wish I asked more questions when I was in 11th grade. Um, but be curious, figure out, try like to ask yourself with figuring yourself out. And that's something that you can do on your own. You don't necessarily need to broadcast out to the world. Like you can be working on yourself and have no one know. Like that could be your biggest secret. That could be your secret project, right? That like, like everyone has one of those, one of those ideas that, you know, if you worked on it hard enough, that could make you a millionaire. Why not have that be you? Why not have that, have something like for me, I, now I have like a journal where I write down all my craziest ideas, people I want to meet, things I want to do, things I want to accomplish. And you figure out ways to do it. Like you can do it. Like I can do it on my phone, on my notes app, like, and those are, you can, you know, you can lock those so no one can see them. You know what I mean? Like be curious, ask questions, figure yourself out. Um, and I, I'd say don't close any doors that you haven't explored yet. You know, like if you can just say off the surface, like you see someone doing something from afar and you can just say like, oh, nah, that's not me. Like if you know there's no interest, then okay. But if you're slightly curious, you've got to tap in and figure out what like what your greatest potential is there because you never know, especially in this day and age where there's so, so many non-traditional careers out there where people can be extremely successful. You know what I mean? And I'm this, I'm not by any means advising that this is how you should go about it. But like there, there are 13 and 14 year olds that are making millions of dollars because they're really good at video games. You know what I mean? Like, and again, that is not me saying <laughs> lock in and just become really good at 2k, but Figure yourself out. Like, if there's something that you're interested in, you feel like there's not an avenue for other people to who have achieved that success, why not be a pioneer? Figure it out. Ask the right questions. Um, and again, like tying back to that education piece, like learn, learn, learn. Like, emulate those that you've seen that do things really well. Seek advice. Be honest and open about the feedback that you want to get. Because again, like we talked about, that feedback is a gift. Um, and again, just push yourself. I think pushing yourself again, it's a lot harder to commit to when you're younger because in your mind, you're like, I have so much life to live. Um, but then you realize that like, it goes by like that. So yeah, I, I definitely say continue to push yourself, explore all avenues, um, and be curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are great pieces of advice. I can't wait to see what that 11th grader ends up doing. <laughs> um, so the next question, we obviously have all heard of Facebook. We've all heard of ESPN. These are like super cool jobs for a lot of our kids. They're like, I want to do that. How do I do that? Um, mm -hmm. And so it's a huge kudos to you for having had this really cool career. What advice Thank do you, you have for students, for adults that are out there who feel like they have these big dreams, but they're like, I don't think that I'm capable of achieving these dreams? Mm -hmm. Um. One thing that I think is really important to remember, and I kind of touched on this earlier, was very few people have succeeded in life just doing these things on their own. One of the things that I think I pay attention to the most now when I look at interviews from people I admire, um, you read books on, you know, like really well-respected figures in our society who really highlight the struggle that they went through before getting and, and reaching the success that they've reached. I really try and focus on that now because you learn that at one point, everyone who has achieved something great has had a really low point where they too have doubted themselves, right? Like they can, they can think back to a time where you, you can think about like athletes and entertainers who often talk about, being so poor that, you know, they were living out of their car or they were living with their friend on their friend's couch, whatever the case may be. Those aren't the most glamorous stories and that's not what's glorified, but it's the truth. You know what I mean? Like I, I was there too. And I was at ESPN where I was feeling like lost and hopeless and feeling like I, I was never like, that was going to be the highlight in the peak of my career embrace that struggle like use that as something that's going to push you to get to that next level like that's what it is it's challenging yourself it's taking those 
moments where you feel down and discouraged and using that to fuel your fire because you also have to realize like and i've done this i anytime i've been frustrated i stop back and realize like how fortunate i am you know what i mean and how regardless of where i think i stand in my career i know that there's someone whether i know them or not that wants to be where i'm at like they like that's something that in this day and in age and at this point in their life, if they were able to get to where I'm at, that's like a win for them. The same way that I look up to people in my circle and within, not only within Facebook, but across the industry that I look to and I'm like, that's what I want. So I think it's about pushing yourself, right? And really betting on yourself to understand that, no, like, I get it. Like, it's hard to say no one's going to do it but you. But no one's going to, no one can vouch for you like you can. No one can speak to, from an emotional standpoint, how badly you want something, how deeply you care about something, excuse me, than you can. So be your biggest advocate. Like, figure out ways to continue to champion yourself, to not only make yourself feel good in your own skin, but make yourself confident when you're speaking to folks that are in positions that you want to be in to show them that you belong. Because it's hard, right? Like, that's part of the process. That's part of it. It's finding the people who have withstood all of the diverse, all of the adversity to get to where they want us to be. We we all have them. We all have them. We all have stories of those really dark days, right? That like, I mean, I still have them. I like in 2020, outside of coronavirus and everything that's going on, because those are really dark times too. But we all have really dark times, despite any amount of success that we've achieved. So it's really just about like locking yourself in and understanding never losing sight of the goal and continuing to get creative with ways in which you can accomplish it. Yes, that's extremely good advice. Um, and that kind of leads into this next question from educators who are working with their kids and wondering, you know, as they're thinking about careers, specifically high school educators, um, yep. what are skills and character traits that students should be honing as they're starting to think seriously about their futures? Um, I, again, I feel like this ties back to a lot of the questions. You've, you've, you guys have been asking some really good questions because they all just like roll into one. Yeah. Um, that, that curiosity piece and that desire to continue to educate yourself um, is huge. I think having an understanding of where you want to be and analyzing the landscape to see how other folks have done it, how other folks are attempting to do it, how folks have failed to do it, that allows you to, like I mentioned, like you have that notebook and you can just take a note of saying like, oh, I saw that this person tried this and it didn't work out. Is this something that I can do? I can take what they learned and kind of improve upon it? Or is that is that a dead end? And you can eliminate that as an approach that you can take. Mm -hmm. um, you really have to put your pride aside too a lot of the times and be willing to there, I mean, there, there are going to be people in your life that are going to test how badly you want something. Mentors do it. Um, friends do it. Uh, and you kind of have to put your pride aside and say, listen, this is something that I want. So again, like, you're not going to have me running all over the city, but if I need 20 minutes of your time and the only way I can do it is to get across town and I, I have to try and figure, like, I, you got to do it. If, if the only time you have an opportunity to talk on the phone is, 6 a.m. and I usually wake up at 8, I'm not going to turn that meeting down because I want to get some sleep. Like, I'd rather that life that I'm looking to achieve more than this two hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming heavily convicted in your desires and realizing that, listen, at the end of the day, all the work that you put in gets forgotten about in terms of all that stress once you've accomplished something because it's all worth it. It no longer feels like work. Mm -hmm. It was worth it. Like those are steps that you needed to take to get you where you're, to get you where you're at. And that was a goal of yours. You've accomplished it. None of what, like, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. That is all that matters. If you look at that contract, like I mentioned earlier, if you look at that to-do list as a checkbox. I'm not writing how painful it was to get through this project on my to-do list. All I'm saying is this was on my to-do list and I've done it. Mm -hmm. Just like a resume, right? Like, when you look at my resume, for example, you see the companies that I've worked, you don't see the struggle that went through it. You don't see the times that you doubt yourself, right? Like 
on paper, this is, these are the steps that I've taken. It's really about just having that conviction and realizing that like at the end of the day, so much of what you stress out about in real time, once you've accomplished something and you look back a couple of years, you're like, I was stressed out over it. That like, and you realize it's part of the process. So again, be maintaining your conviction in yourself, that drive to accomplish your goals and realizing that, listen, there's beauty in the struggle. Mm-hmm. Because if, if there wasn't a struggle, it would, it would just be, it would be easy. Right. And then everyone would be able to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a little bit more of a fun question. So um, we got a seventh grader in Delaware who wants to know as a client solutions manager in your day to day, you know, what exactly are you doing and what is your favorite part of your job? Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> so as a client solutions manager, um, I work within uh, our CPG space, our consumer package goods space, and more specifically within our alcohol beverage clients. Um, so I am looking at their branding initiatives for the course of the calendar year, looking at ways in which they want to activate on both Facebook and Instagram from an, uh, advertising perspective. Um, and we help them target people that we feel like are going to be most relevant to their ads. So we can, for example, if there is, um, and since we're talking about kids, I'll, I'll make it more of a, a PG related topic. So say for example, Nike, um, and we are looking to, they're looking to advertise LeBron's new shoe. Um, Nike can come to Facebook and say like, Hey, listen, this is the shoe that's going to release. This is how we're going to release it. This is where it's going to be available. These are the people that we want to advertise to. And we take our user base and we look at folks that we feel like match those criteria and we help them make sure that those ads reach those people as often as they want them to. Um, and at the right time in terms of when they can, you know, convert on that purchase. So, um, we're putting ads in the right place in front of the right people at the right time. Um, and I think what comes with that is realizing that I'm on the phone with some of these big world renowned brands who trust me that I'm going to help them market their product better than a competitor can. I think there's, there's, there's a huge value in feeling trusted. And I think for me, that's one of the coolest things. Um, I think it, it also plays in my favor that I, I work at, you know, such a well-respected and hardworking company that is making such amazing change and impact in the world. I'm super fortunate that, you know, every Friday I can, you know, Mark Zuckerberg hosts a company-wide Q and A um, that he streams live for all employees, so I can tap in and just feel like I'm the same way in which you and I are talking. That's Mark on the other end of my screen, um, and it's crazy because I can sit back and realize that one of who's going to one hundred percent is going to go down as one of the most influential people of our history. Mm-hmm. I have access to him. And I think, again, like we tied back to that education piece, like it becomes fun learning from people that you know are the best to do it. Mm-hmm. It becomes fun learning and realizing that in one way or another, like people are trusting you as one of the best in the business too, right? Like I'm working at one of the top companies in the space, working for some of our most high profile clients who at the end of the day, if they ask a question of me and I respond confidently, with facts to support my statement, they're going to trust it. And then I'm going to, I get to see that on Instagram, on Facebook, on these apps that we're all using every day. Like I have impact there. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably one of the most exciting parts um, of where I sit right now. Yeah. That sounds very rewarding. I love that. Well, unfortunately we're running low on time. So I only have one question left for you. Um, and that is just sort of a wrap up. Like I'd love to know if you have one or two takeaways from this conversation. I feel like there was so much here, um, but one, one or two that you'd like to leave our viewers with today. Yeah. Um, again, I know like we're talking to a bunch of different students of different ages, but I think the biggest thing that I want you guys to all take away from this is like, be your best friend, be your biggest supporter, be your biggest advocate. Be the person that you can rely on. 
be someone that, you know, when times are tough, you are conditioned to get through this because this is all part of the plan. You understand that the struggle is part of getting you to where you want to get. You understand that days aren't going to be bright. There are going to be some really tough days, but you have to be strong to get through it. I think you have to remind yourself that there's a lot of life to be lived, right? So you can be stressed out and annoyed for a day or two and it may get you to somewhere that's going to have lasting impact in your life. One of the things that I I hold on to when I look at a career standpoint is you can take a role or be at a job for two or three years where it's really, really stressful, really, really stressful. And you can walk away every day from work and being down on yourself and being discouraged and frustrated In the grand scheme of things, we're all expected to work, what, 40, 45 years in our career? Um, If I can look at two or three years that were really frustrating me, but know that those two or three years of frustration got me to the next 37 of happiness, um, I'd take that every day, you know? So find perspective, um, never lose sight of what your goals are, and understand that any goal that you're going to make that's that's worth working for is something's going to be worth the reward at the end of the day, right? Like you're not setting, you hold yourself to a high enough standard where these goals are going to be things that are going to require really hard work. Again, like find an enjoyment in getting through it because that makes it feel so much better once you've accomplished those goals. So just never lose sight, always trusting yourself and uh, never stop working. Amazing. That's a perfect way to wrap up. Thank you again so much for sharing your experience and your wisdom with us today um, and being part of our Dreamwakers daily conversations. Thank you so, so much. Um, Really enjoyed it. And, you know, anybody, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, We'll have my contact information included. So. Awesome. Really important. Thank you so much for offering that. Um, and Absolutely. everyone watching, you're welcome to tune in every day at one o'clock Eastern to keep up with our Dreamwakers daily conversations. And in case you miss them, they will be live on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. And you can check the link in the comments. Everyone have a really great day. And thanks again, Brian. Absolutely. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye.